things started here. Um, I think just a very brief welcome on behalf of the World Economic Forum. Um, we're very happy to have this session here today. The circular economy concept is, is something that we hold very much um, kind of to heart in terms of really driving the objective of supporting a sustainable transition. Um, I think we all know that we have an incredible natural resource challenge in front of us in terms of the scale of natural resource demand. Um, but we also see that there's quite a lot of interesting innovations that are emerging. I think one um, case in point is just outside um, this room, we have Francis Solano, a social entrepreneur, uh, with us at the Forum from the Philippines who is creating trash and um, sort of art out of uh, waste materials. The question for us here today is really how do we scale these kinds of solutions and how do we really drive um, this agenda at a very global level and that's really what we're here to discuss um, and I'll pass it over to, to Sharon who will lead us through the conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you Antonio and uh, Antonio always sets one of the most ambitious sessions so we're really going to be held to task on this one. But those of you who were there in January at Davos know that this was a very exciting uh, session. And indeed, this platform for accelerating the circular economy, I don't think could have come at a better time because if we don't create a circular economy alongside our challenge for a net zero future, then we're not going to make the challenge of uh, saving a planet for um, future generations. So, or at least saving it for human beings. So we did challenge you in January the 100-day challenge. We said, okay, if everyone's serious, how far can we get in 100 days? Well, guess what? For those of you who were there, you're back, and we're going to do some uh, accounting on that question. But we'll also use this session to further advance progress, uh, helping to actually bring to, bring to the forefront collaborative projects that we can take forward and focus on the priority issues. So having launched it in January, the Philips uh, CEO, who's with us today, actually, uh, Franz stepped up and said, Philips will lead this. And of course, we have uh, the head of the Global Environment Facility with Naoki here, and uh, with the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, Accenture Strategy in the World Economic Forum, they've formed a team. But for those of you who are new, think about this problem. In Western economies, all all, about three quarters of everything we buy becomes waste within just one year. Three quarters of everything we purchase. And then, of course, we know that resource consumption is becoming less efficient. People thought technology would move us away, but in fact, you've seen a recoupling. And uh, we're now consuming more resources per unit of GDP than you could have imagined. In fact, if it continues, the estimate is that we'll consume three times more resources annually by 2050. You know that's unsustainable. It's unsustainable now. That's just a horror movie, and we've got to turn it around. The circular economy provides us with an opportunity not just to deal with an imperative, but actually to decouple economic progress from uh, resource, natural resources and resource consumption. And indeed, I see Bill in the room, and he's always talking about resource productivity, and I tell union leaders that that's the uh, bargaining chip of the future. So if we can make this happen, we drive new businesses, we actually drive new jobs, but indeed we get a sustainable planet. So I don't have to tell you that it's, uh, it's, it'll help achieve the objectives of the SDGs, particularly Goal 12, and, uh, and indeed, uh, we've already touched on some of the opportunities, and you'll do a bit more about that. So without any further ado, I'm going to make you work in a minute. But first of all, I want to uh, actually ask the panel a few questions so we can refocus on why we need this platform for accelerating the circular economy. Franz. Franz van Houten is the CEO of Royal Phillips. He's uh, taken an incredible responsibility as a leader in this area with uh, the WEF and other partners. Why is this a priority for Philips? What are the priorities of the platform that uh, you think bring participants not just to be gathered in this room, but indeed the, the focus that you want to drive business towards? Well, <clears throat> I believe that all companies need to take responsibility to, to take part in creating a sustainable future. 
if I look at our own journey, then we started 20, 15, 20 years ago in basically becoming aware of our own footprint. And then we started to deal with that. Um, and now we can say that by 2020, we will be uh, carbon neutral. But for us, that's not enough, right? Because you still have the uh, raw material consumption and you still create waste. And uh, we said that we need to push the transition from linear to circular um, and not see it as a chore, but rather see it as an opportunity uh, to, to further our own business. So I don't see this as a kind of a, a, a negative that you need to tick uh, on the agenda and be seen as a good uh, corporate social responsible company. Uh, actually, I'd like to use the opportunity to inspire companies to say, you can make this part of your business model and you will be a better company. You can grow faster, you can appeal to more people uh, and you can actually completely reconcile it with the goal of shareholder value creation. Um, in the Netherlands, there are several companies who help each other with best practice sharing, and we call it the Dutch Sustainable Growth Coalition. And it is interesting because if you share best practices, you can actually learn a lot and you can go a lot faster. With the Ellen MacArthur Foundation and WEF, we had the Plastics Initiative, and actually we were able together to achieve something, and then it gets momentum and then it can drive itself. But in the beginning, it needed you know, a push and a little bit of hand-holding. Uh, and it, I think it's the same with the circular economy thinking. So the reason why we step up as a company is because, first of all, we believe that uh, in this global uh, environment and uh, climate change, we really now need to step up and we cannot progress, procrastinate anymore. But secondly, I, I fundamentally believe that uh, sharing uh, the best practices on what we call the PACE platform, the platform for accelerating the circular economy, is a great opportunity that will all make us richer, right? will all make us wiser. Um, the goals of the platform are uh, as follows. You know, we, we want to uh, foster the adoption of circular economy, but specifically, we also believe there are some si system changes required to help uh, make this progress. For example, blended finance models for circular economy projects that allow more widespread adoption and replication. Uh, if you look at uh, the way uh, especially governments buy, then they look at the initial price but not, not maybe a total cost of ownership. Right? So we need to start making people aware that these things need to be changed. Um, and, and take down these so-called systemic barriers uh, for adoption. And, um, and then finally, we, we think that by bringing private and public sectors into collaboration, we can scale impact faster. And um, it, it is not an easy journey. I'm glad that you are all here um, because we need you to stand up to be part of it uh, and, and spread the word. Uh, today we will talk about best practices and learn from each other because we think that the example uh, will be critical to scale this. Moreover, uh, we had great examples where we could help each other and we have solved problems and thereby we got success. So for me, if we achieve that this afternoon to have a few more projects where we collaborate, uh, we will gain altitude and we'll go faster. So. Well, there's the motivation for success. And I'm reminded of a young entrepreneur who you may recall, I can't remember his name, I'm embarrassed to say, but was in the room in, this, in January. And he looked at his older peers around the table and he said, I don't understand the issues. He said, if you can't reuse it or recycle it, don't deploy it in the first place. <laughs> such sense from such a young brain and a leader in a manufacturing startup that I've got no doubt will grow with that kind of courage. But the blended finance issue that Franz raised, uh, Naoki, this is your area, of course, and you've been trying to think through these partnerships, particularly for scaling up uh, efforts in developing uh, our country. So, you know, what, what do funding organisations like the GEF need to do to help accelerate investments that will support this transition? 
Uh, thank you. Um, the GF is actually the co-partnering with an, uh, uh, the CEO of the Space Platform Initiative to accelerate the circular economy. And we were super excited for two reasons. Uh, because the circular economy is a fundamental solution to this global commons challenge. Without system change, we can't really keep the global commons, kept the global commons into safe operating space. But second point, that we can't really do it without actually partnership or without platform, because all systems are so complex, we really need to work together under the shared platform. That's the second reason why the GF is here and very much interested in working together uh, with you. Then in terms of that then the question, that what exactly I think we, that the GF kind of institution can do, actually in the past, there are a kind of project in, in this domain, for instance, we actually partnership with the Ellen MacArthur Foundation in terms of the marine plastic, and we work with the, some agent cities to uh, work with the, uh, the cities to how to stop or reduce the, the plastic going to the, mar going to the ocean. We worked with some African countries about waste management, but we really need to bring this kind of small initiative everywhere in the world to scale. And that's why we need um, to, to work together. So going forward, that we are actually that then, uh, have an opportunity for next four years, the GF and investment cycles, F7, we put the circular <coughs> economy as one of the funding proposal. And we are basically waiting for us together to create a much stronger pipeline. <coughs> and there, I think there are two things, two opportunities, uh, concrete opportunities I am looking for. One is that and it's not the before blended finance. We need to work with the government, work with the industry or association to create a better standard. By creating the better standard for industries, we create more economic opportunity, the market opportunities. We were doing this, for instance, that the, uh, the building, we are doing with lighting, we are doing that the, um, uh, air conditioner. So how we could create the better regulation, better policy framework and that the GF is very much interested in working with the government and the industrial association to create a kind of you know, set, uh, standard, setting standard. That's the number one thing. But the second thing is actually the blended finance. We were kind of a risk lover, and we can really take the maybe biggest risk along this and uh, the ladder. And uh, here, that uh, you can use us as an um, uh, equity or guarantee to take the risks that the fits maybe private sector are not really willing to take. So create a kind of project or the program to, to think about how you private sector can do, but how you can use as the risk rubber to take or de-risk your, your um, a project and program. That's a second entry point for us to be useful to this, and, um, to this platform. And actually with co-chair, with chair, we agree that we need to strengthen or build up the pipeline for us to move forward and create the more results on the ground. So I, likewise, I really hope that uh, today's session can give us that, uh, some better way going forward with very, very tangible results. So thank you so much. Thank you, Naoki. So there's the kind of you know, capacity to drive the resource base that's necessary. Well, Minister McCannon, you come at it from a different perspective, but your government, the government of Finland, of course, has been a leader, not just in thinking through this in the context of your country, but indeed driving it internationally. So what are your priorities and what do you think this platform can help with that uh, as priority priorities to, to solve the problem of those uh, of associated challenges? Mm. Yeah, well, thank you. And uh, obviously, we are not the only government trying to solve these issues, but probably in certain segments, quite uh, much uh, core of the edge uh, actor. And uh, I would put it by introducing three main drivers and putting also, also a policy measure for each of them. First of all, if starting with an example of uh, Neste, which is a leading oil refinery of, in Finland with a revenue above 10 billion euros, Ten years ago, everything came from refining Russian oil. Now, 80% uh, of their uh, uh, operating profit comes already from uh, biofuels. They started with palm oil, but now already uh, more than 80% of the resources come actually from waste and residues. 
And um, why Neste has been one of the first companies, if comparing to Shell or others, I think that it's uh, actually the driver is empowering by lack of resources. And that's been a part of the Finland's circular economy success story that we don't have fossil mm. resources. So if you don't have, you are not sitting on your own oil feeds, then you start to develop something else. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, traditionally, of course, being a forest industry country, uh, well, we have forests, but that's a renewable source. Then you always have to think that, okay, if I cut these trees, <coughs> I need new trees. Next year, we have to grow them again. And that's been backbone of the old school circular thinking in the Finland. And that's also the backbone of the chemical industry, which now can be seen, for example, in the uh, history's largest investment to pulp factory in Finland above 1 billion euro ticket by Metsä Group, which is a new pulp factory, which actually is net positive in its energy usage. It adds about two percentage points to the share of renewable energy in Finnish energy mix, though it's one of the largest users at the same time, but it produces more than, than consumes. So empowering by lack of resource is very important part, but then of course another uh, like necessary thing is that we have reliable institutions. And there is the problem. For Neste currently the largest problem is how to get reliable uh, sourcing partners for wastes and residues, especially in developing countries. And as we all know, when thinking about especially waste processing and uh, landfill projects, the problem is that in most part of the world, that business is very gray, even in hands of mafia. And that's actually one bottleneck for all circular economy, that the material flows when something is called waste, then it's usually managed with something not so normal business ethics, and, and that's actually something that, that is necessary to break, especially in, let's say, 50 largest cities in the world. Otherwise, we won't get those materials back. Then another driver is that I think as an economist that the core must always lie in relative prices, that the price of wasting materials is way too cheap still in most cases. And uh, we must use regulation. Was it taxing or was it other kinds? For example, one thing that we are still missing too much in Finland as well, that we waste animal feces, animal manure in agriculture so that it goes to rivers and sea and our Baltic Sea gets uh, eutroph eutrophication too heavily. And there we must, for example, hopefully within EU regulation, uh, put a blending obligation for organic uh, fertilizers and that would immediately create a market for animal manure to be processed to get the biogas and make energy to get the um, processed part of the organic fertilizer and use that in, in industrial way. And this is a way to influence the price, relative prices when the farmer thinks what to do with animal feces, for example. But the third thing is, of course, an innovation-driven circular economy, and that's why we are probably here, that we also need investment, especially in new kind of innovation to share the risk of making something new. And here, of course, also we are having, uh, for example, true FinFund, which we are now accelerating by investing about half a billion of euros to our FinFund in investment type uh, developing um, support. And it, it, for example, in Vietnam, we have a project where a uh, waste processing plant and a biogas plant is financed by FinFund, and we hope that that will be a showcase for that region that this technology works, and then it will be multiplied in other cities already without uh, public uh, finance, with, with, with commercial finance. So that's definitely something which is important. And I think that the positive thing is that now the mobile networks make many things easier than before. Uh, we don't need so many vehicles if we manage to get mobility as a service working in, in cities. We wouldn't have any traffic problems here in New York if people would not own cars but just use them when they are really needed. And that's something that 10 years, 15 years ago was a totally stupid idea, but nowadays through like 
mobile operators one can share things as we see from Airbnb and such things it's already working or, or uh, some taxi operator type mobile things as well and I think that this will shape quite much in a new way all the service industry and the service industry will need much less materials and physical resources to, to serve people in the old way and this is probably something where we hopefully are innovative enough in our legislation not hindering the development but fostering it, it forward. Thanks. Well, there you go. Necessity is the mother of invention. So uh, this has driven Finland to be a leader amongst others. But there's two things there. One is, of course, the challenge of mm. what do we do with waste if we're not going to, if we're going to eliminate landfill? Critical, huge challenge. But secondly, how do you make sure it's not just in Finland, but the mm. partnerships are there mm. that Naoki was talking about that actually make it possible for everybody to, uh, to share in the benefits and therefore all of us in terms of sustainability. So thank you uh, for both leadership, uh, the leadership minister, but also for the challenge of what the platform mm. can do to accelerate these uh, ideas and proven technologies by way of partnership. Well, of course, uh, for, for Sundo Garretan, you also are a member of uh, Congress in Argentina. So. But you have a particular history because you were an entrepreneur, well, you probably still are an entrepreneur, but now you're in government. And indeed, um, you know that a lot of the innovations come from small social entrepreneurs. And we're not seeing the scale that we need to make these, not just uh, the viable businesses that will see greater employment and greater, but greater sustainability in the sense that they will become part and parcel of our economic uh, landscape and not just a novelty. So what do we have to do to get that scale? That's a good point. And in, in Latin America, we have a long way to go, talking about circular economy. Um, we are working at three different levels. The first one, as an entrepreneur, I got involved with uh, uh, an NGO that is called Sistema B, B System. And with Sistema B, we are promoting a different kind of business model in Latin America. So with Sistema B, we have been helping different countries and talking with the different parliament and Congress around Latin America to promote this kind of a new business model, thinking, rethinking the operating system, you know? And with Sistema B, we have been promoting laws in the different Congress. So, but also it's not about promoting a new kind of business model. Also, it's about to promote, to generate this kind of entrepreneurs. So, five or six years ago, we started with a social lab that is a platform the, that is developing this kind of entrepreneur and helping these kind of entrepreneurs that are focusing in, in different kind of business model, but they are double or triple impact entrepreneurs. And they are doing a great job there in Latin America they are in around six countries. They invested in around 70 companies in, in, in Latin America. Um, because in Latin America, we have a great entrepreneurs, but the problem is that they are focusing for, for profit, just for profit, and they don't think about new kind of business model. So with Social Lab, we have been helping to promote that. So we have a lot of entrepreneurs now that they are trying to solve the big problem of the world and thinking about this circular economy and not about just for profit. So, but it's not just about that. We have to scale up this, as you, as you mentioned, those entrepreneurs that are focusing in Argentina or in Chile or Colombia, to have something big, we have to change the system. Mm -hmm. And in the Congress, we have been working a lot about that. And we are creating a new kind of organization, new kind of company, uh, with a new law. For example, in Argentina this year, we will have this law that it's called uh, Lay Big. That it's, we are creating a new kind of companies. It's something similar than the, the big corps here in the States, but to, in, in some ways different because they are thinking about the object of the, of the society. It's about circular economy. Mm. So we are promoting this kind of bills around the different parliament in, in Latin America, and that's great because it's the only way to have this context to scale up all these kind of, of, of ventures. 
Uh, also in the Congress, uh, a few weeks ago, we passed a bill about creating an observatory uh, about the SDG. So I think that we have to put all these concepts in a big perspective. And the only way to do that is using those kind of institutions, like the Congress, Parliament, executive power. But the problem is that we, we are now in the 21st century using tools, institutions that are from the 19th century, like the Congress, and we are using tools from this 15th century, like the, the mm -hmm. printer system. So we have to start to think about a new kind of model and maybe, I don't know if it's top down or, or from the bottom to the top. So there's the challenge, how to, you know, drive through five centuries of uh, tools to actually get to where we need to be. But I thought the notion of harnessing the energy of the entrepreneurs to solve the big problems of the world and in the context providing the scaffolding from government for scale up. I mean, if you can get those two challenges uh, in sync, then you are going to drive a different level of thinking if the circular economy is at the centre of that, uh, that set of demands. So the panellists, give them a big hand. They're pretty inspirational, I think. When you've got people like this stepping up and saying the circular economy is the only imperative and we've got to figure out how to make it happen, then the rest of you need to support them. So now it's your turn. What we're actually going to do is ask you to, in a minute, to move to the back of the room, but with two objectives. The first is that we've got a series of people who will introduce themselves as the kind of project or thought leaders around a project they're engaged in, and they're going to take just a few minutes to tell you about that. But then, instead of discussing that with them, we want to capture your responses. What are your ideas for the policy measures that need collaborative thought, and indeed, whether you're working on them or you just think they're important, Get them on a post-it note, get your name and your organisation and your contact details on it, and then we're going to put them up and cluster them before we try to talk about some of those other things, because we actually want to capture the thoughts of everybody in the room so that we can help to assess those in terms of the, uh, the, the platform going forward. But uh, is there anything I missed? Is somebody sitting there with a burning thought in their brain? A little bit, because... Um we should not fall into a complaining session. Therefore, these breakouts should not be what other people need to do, but rather what we can do. Yes. And what you can do, and maybe with the help of other people here. Um, that is also how, as a, a platform, we have been solving challenges already. Um, and I think that is what is going to be setting the example uh, for the rest of the world, uh, so that we actually put our action where our mouth is. I think that's right, Franz, and in fact, you should be the moderator, really, because <laughs> that's the challenge. Not to say it's someone good. else's problem, but to say, what, what projects do I think are critical? What am I working on, or what do I want to work on, and how can this platform assist? So let's take a seat. Imagine there are tables, but sit in the chairs at the back, and can I ask uh, the discussion leaders, those engaged in a project already, to introduce yourself and kick it off as quickly as possible. Don't let them uh, stand around and talk, just let's get at it. 